All right, <laughs> here we go. So <clears throat> this Revit tip is a tip that, I don't know, people mess around with Windows a lot. They really do. And they make 3D mullions, even though the mullions or the muntins are really tiny. They're really tiny on the elevations. And they spend a lot of time putzing around on them. So I want to show you that you can actually get away with really parametric mullions that flex to your window size. And, and the, even the number, we'll put a, a, a parametric number on them of how many mullions we have um, onto a window and show you that it looks perfectly good in the elevations. Okay, we're just going to use a model line. A model line? No way! All right, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Here is our little building. <laughs> and you'll notice that the windows don't have any mullions in them. No mullions at all. La la la. So why don't we just pick one, okay? And once you highlight it, you can hit Edit Family, because here we go. Here we go. This is the little family that we're talking about. And everybody's got a double-hung family, probably somewhere in their office. But let me go to the elevation, the exterior elevation. This is what I'm talking about right here. Okay? In fact, I'll even pop it into consistent colors so you can see where the frame is and the trim and the glass. Okay, so here we go. If I want... A, um, a model line to represent a mullion on this. Watch this. I can set the, pick a plane. I'm going to pick this glass plane to be where I'm putting these mullions. And I'm going to put a mullion right there. And I can stick a mullion right here. And I can stick a mullion over here. Hey, what's up with that? Just two horizontals and a vertical? Well, look at this. I can say align, A-L on the keyboard, align, align up to here, and and lock. Hey, align down here, and and lock. Same with the sides. Go to here, you, whoops, wrong one. Oh no, I went to the wrong line. Back it off, look at this, align. Go to here, you, and lock. Go to here, you, and lock. And same with the other side, okay? We're just going to do this, and we're going to lock them into place, okay? Now, if we want these, actually, let's just get rid of that guy, that horizontal. I just realized I'm going to put a another vertical in, <laughs> and I'm going to say align to here. Here's, uh, you'll see why. It's the, the proportions of the window. I was just putting too many horizontals in this top panel, Okay. So that's working, except for that these are not lined up where they need to be at all. Ah, ah, it's not going to work. Oh, wait, wait. There's a solution. Calm down. Dry your tears. Here we go. What I want to do is this. I'm going to do a, a, put a dimension on there. I'm going to go from this frame to here, to here, and to there. And then... Once I place it, I can click the equal sign and it aligns those, okay? And it equalizes them. I'm gonna go from, a, I'm gonna also put a dimension from here to that one to there and place it and hit the equal sign and it places it in the center. So those will flex no matter what size the window gets, we'll always have six panels of glass above. Now, this guy down below is a different story. We need to have a sip of coffee before we start this one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, now we're talking. All right, so I'm going to create another model line, but <gasps> I don't want, I need to set, wait for it, I need to go down to create, and I need to set my, I need to pick a plane that I'm working on. It's the glass. It's further back. Ooh, hey, it's further back, mm, like that, than the glass out in the front. So, I picked the back glass, and now model line, here we go. I'm going to stick one here, and one over here, a couple verticals. Those are perfectly good verticals, but watch this. What if I put three horizontals here? Uh, one, and two, and three. 
Those don't line up with anything. <laughs> okay, let's do our align and lock things to start. Okay, ready? Watch this. Wait for it. A, L on the keyboard, align. Go over here, U, and lock. Go over here, U, and lock. Right here, U, and lock. Go to here, U, and lock. You have to do this. You have to say those words or it doesn't work. If you guys are silent when you're working, these things will not work for you. Go to here, U, and lock. Go to here, U, and lock. Get personal with these. Hey, dude, go here, you. Okay, go here, you, and lock. Okay, looks like a fantastic window. <laughs> Not yet. Okay, wait for it. Dimension string from the side to this one, to that one, and there. And I'll put these down below and equalize it. Boom. Ooh, looking good. Okay, I want this middle one to always be centered. But I want, hey, they all moved. And I want this one, this one, and this one, and this one. I skipped the middle one to always flex. Hey, these things are just, oh, those are equal. And that's equal. Everything equal. Oh, look where this one is going. I'm going to bring this down to this line. Okay. And equalize it again. There we go. Okay. So what we've got, friends, is a, we've got glass that is equal panels and, um, but, okay, I'm going to put some parameters on them. I don't want all these going on at the same time. I want this one and this one, these two horizontals to be associated with, like, the word two horizontals, or with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine panels. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna put it, make it as nine panels. So here we go. Watch this. They are over on the over there on the side. Okay, take a look. Visible. They are visible, but I'm gonna associate them with a parameter. I'm gonna make the per, new parameter, and the new parameter is gonna be um, how many did I say? Nine panels. Okay nine panels at bottom, say, at the bottom, you know, in the bottom pane, at bottom pane, P-A-N-E, I think, at bottom pane. So nine panels, it's a, let's make it an instance parameter and I'll show you how it works, okay? And I'll say, okay. So those two are associated with nine panels. And if I click this middle one, I can change its visibility create a new um, parameter and make it six panels at um, bottom pane instance parameter. Okay, so now look, I have got those so I can turn a couple of them on and or turn the other one on. La, la, la. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is push this back into my project. I'm gonna say, um, load into the project, close it. I'm not going to worry about saving it right now. I just want to show you how it works. I'm loading it back into the project. I'm going to overwrite the existing version. And it's ready to go. Hmm. What's up with that? Okay. So take a look. Too much stuff on. Everything turned on everywhere. So what I want to do is upstairs, let's just say upstairs, up, I'm going to say I, once I highlight it, you can see over here in the parameters. Take a look at the parameters. Both the six panels and the nine panels are turned on but I wanna turn the nine panels off when I'm upstairs. So see what it looks like? And I'm gonna use the match properties command. I'm gonna pick that window and I can just click on the other windows upstairs and they will all represent, you know, see how they're going to six over six, okay? And I'm gonna spin this model around and continue to um, fix the upper floor windows. I could go to the second floor. Um, plan and do the same thing. But I just wanted to show you guys that you can use match properties to get these guys to have six over six. But on the first floor, I don't want, if you notice, there's too much on as well. So I'll pick one of those and I can uncheck the six panels at the bottom. So it's only nine panels. And it looks like that. Look at that left window over there. Nine panels over six. 
And so what I can do here is use uh, match properties and push those to all these windows coming around this guy. Okay. So just showing you guys how this thing works. You can place these and maybe I make the, the upper windows shorter or whatever. So you can have the, the correct number of panels. Let's come around the front of the building. Where am I? Oh, there we go. You can have the correct number of panels on the building just by setting some parameters. Now look at the glass looks fine, fine. And if I go to my elevation, like here's my plan view. Okay, let me go to my plan view. If I go to elevation number one, look at this. Look at that. Those windows look perfectly fine. You don't have to have double lines and solid 3D mullions or muntins to make it work in, in your elevations, in your project. It's so easy. And when the window sizes change, these flex and they stay um, as they're supposed to um, because we put parameters on them to lock them to, um, to be equal. Anyway, I hope you guys like this little tip. It's really easy. Use model lines on your windows instead of trying to get double thickness. It's, you don't need to. Back in the day when we hand drafted, Man, we would get in trouble if we used two lines for something as simple as a muntin. A single line is all you need to convey that uh, how many panes are going to be in that window. And so we've got six over six, six over nine, and so on. I hope this helps you guys with your 3D modeling when you, as you move forward, working with windows, and just use model lines for divided lights in your windows. All right, I'll talk to you later on another fantastic video. And uh, until then, I'll um, have a great and fantastic day. Okay, bye-bye.